Biggest questions, best player, position group, breakout player. What do you need to know about their schedule? So let's talk about Ohio State for a second. And we're going to make our way around the country eventually. But the question that I think is first and foremost on everyone's mind up there is did we just address offensive tackle as much as we needed to? So to give you an idea, uh, Dewan Jones went in the fourth round of the draft. That's one of their tackles last year. Paris Johnson, first rounder. That was another one of their tackles. Obviously, that leaves voids. Uh, they went through spring with three guys that were rotational, and none of them really stood out a whole lot. So they went and got Josh Simmons. He is a San Diego State transfer. I cannot stress enough the importance of him staying healthy and him working out big time. He's got 799 snaps over the last two years at right tackle. He, he has to come through. That's not optional for them especially with their quarterback situation, them breaking in someone new, no matter who it's going to be, he's got to come through. There are a lot of variables in that team. That's got to be a definite guy that comes through for them. Question number two, can their defense actually win them games early? Because I think they may need to. Just think about Ohio State, what you think the profile of that team is. You don't think about defense winning games, but... You also don't think about them being as uncertain at tackle and or quarterback in years past as they are right now. That's why it's a complimentary game, guys. Uh, they brought Jim Knowles in. This is his third year as defensive coordinator. Overall improvement last year. They went from 38th in points per game to 24th. That's improvement statistically, but what's the rest of the story? The rest of the story is in their two losses, the Michigan game, the Ohio State game, Gave up an average of 43.5 points and 8.9 yards per play. So a, a Buckeye fan would look and say, it really doesn't matter what our stats say if that's what we do in the big moments, which is a fair assumption. That's a fair take. And so front seven is going to be pretty incredible this year, I think. You got JTT. I'm going to talk about Jack Sawyer in a second. You got a lot of good players there. Secondary will ultimately tell the tale there. Question number three. You got a quarterback? You got a real QB1? They lie to you sometimes when they say if you got two quarterbacks, you don't have any. But then other times, it ends up being exactly the case. So you got Kyle McCord. You got Devin Brown. Doesn't seem like one grabbed the job by the throat at the end of spring. Although Ohio State didn't have to go and get Tyler Buckner. So I guess that's good news. C.J. Stroud, Justin Fields, J.T. Haskins. Those are the last three that came through there. Dwayne, what did I say, JT? I'm all the way back at JT Barrett. So Dwayne Haskins, those are the last three that came through. They're all of them first-round draft picks. Do we have a first-round draft pick on the graphic Colin just showed you? I'm not sure. Do we need to have one for Ohio State to win this year? I'm also not sure of that. But here's the danger. The danger that some fans have gotten into with Ohio State is just assuming you're going to have a certain level of quarterback play. I was listening to Ryan Day talk with McElroy the other day, and he said, you cannot assume that stuff. There's a lot of hard work, a lot of good recruiting and hard work and development that goes into maintaining that standard of play. You don't just get to say, well, if you're starting a quarterback at Ohio State, you're going to be a certain level of good. Are you? That's not an automatic. And you can't assume it's going to be this year. That's why I asked you, can they win games defensively? Same thing with Alabama. You may need to ask that about them this year. Maybe you'll ask it about Georgia. We don't, a lot of these big programs breaking the new quarterbacks, it's not a guarantee that just because of the sticker on the side of the helmet is something that's been impressive for a long time, that there's going to be a certain level of play. It's that way most of the time because, by and large, they recruit better athletes, so they're more likely to play at a high level. It's not a guarantee. Who is, or what is, the best position group on this team? Don't need to waste much time here. It's wide receiver. It's wide receiver by a wide margin. They had two of them transfer out of there that are probably going to end up starting at Iowa and Auburn. They're just loaded. Marvin Harrison, Emeka Egbuka, both of them are 1,000-yard receivers, one of only two teams to have that in the country. Washington is the other one, by the way. Uh, they've got Julian Fleming there. Cornell, Cornell Tate's coming in, true freshman. Brandon Ennis is there. They're loaded, absolutely loaded. So I think we all know wide receiver Ohio State, pretty synonymous at this point. But the breakout player, potentially on this team, is Jack Sawyer. He was their top overall rated recruit a couple of cycles ago. Everyone's waiting for him to break out. I expect him to break out this year. Now, he's played in 26 games, 
but he hasn't emerged as like a stalwart on that team yet. I think he will. He was the number six overall player in 2021. Sometimes it takes a couple of years for these dudes to really shine through. I think he will this year. And he'll solely, I, I think what they're doing up there with him is just solely working him at defensive end as opposed to that kind of hybrid position off our outside linebacker defensive end. They've worked him out in the past. But that's a loaded group. It's a good time to be playing the position he plays at Ohio State. Okay, the schedule they play this year. It's very interesting because you got to dive into it a little bit. Schedule by schedule up there, there's a big difference. For instance, they play three teams within the top 15 of the national championship odds this year. They play at Notre Dame, they play Penn State, and they play at Michigan. So not only do they play three of the top 15, two of the three on the road, they play five teams with win totals of eight or more, and that doesn't include Western Kentucky, who also has a win total of eight or more. They travel to Wisconsin right after the Penn State game, uh, they've probably got the worst draw. Out of that big three in the East, they probably got the toughest schedule draw of any team up there. So it's going to be a tendency of a lot of people to look at that schedule and say, eh, that's soft. That's not a soft schedule. That's Know what you're talking about. That's not a soft schedule. It's not a murderer's row. It's not like vintage Arkansas schedules of years past. But no, that's not an easy stretch. Ohio State, man, they are very, very intriguing. So much potential drama surrounding that team this year. 